Okay, what we got is an LS with a really bad scraping, scrubbing uh, noise, squeaking noise. Um, customer thought it was a flex plate. I inspected that. <clears throat> Doesn't appear to have any issues. Um, my experience told me, hey, that sounds kind of like a cam lobe that's getting wiped out. Uh, hooked up my scanner to it and watched some misfire graphic. And sure enough, number seven, which is the two rock rims all the way in the back back there. Um, number seven was misfiring almost every time at idle. Okay, so this is a misfire on cylinder seven and it's counting. Uh, so seven's pretty much down. I mean, just, you can see we picked up one misfire on two. You get random ones here and there, but this is the cycles of data, cycles of misfire data. But you can see number seven, it's virtually not working, okay? Missing almost every, I mean, it's just, it's misfiring all the time. So we're gonna attempt to see if we see any anomalies starting it and running it with the valve cover off right now on number seven. So we're gonna do that. Got a pretty pronounced noise. Nothing that I can detect would say, hey, that's definitely bad right there. But what we're gonna do is something I've never done before. I am going to remove both the exhaust and intake rocker on, um, on number seven. And it should throw the, the cam all the way up and get the lobe off of the get the roller off the, the cam, see if that noise goes away. Like I said, we're gonna pull out both the push rod and the rockers. I'm gonna do that right now by removing these eights right here, eight millimeter there and there, and these will come off and I'll pop the push rods out. We'll take a look, see what we see. All right, so we've got two rockers removed, push rods are out, and you can see I've got those valves that are totally seated in the head now. Um, we did disconnect the fuel injector, you can see behind that there, just so we don't wash the cylinder, um, even though yeah, we just don't want uh, fuel flooding into that cylinder when uh, we run it with no valve actuation to get any of that fuel out. Um, it's not a good idea to have fuel running in a cylinder when you have a misfire anyway. But at any rate, I've never done this before, so, but this is my hypothesis. I uh, undid that there and I rotated the motor by hand two times to make sure that I had pushed the lifters up into their trays. Not that I could, I probably wouldn't have made a difference if I just started it, but I'm trying to push them up and my goal is here to see if that sound has gone away. Now, the first thing I'm gonna do when I start it is verify I have oil pressure, that nothing has changed in the oil galley, that the rest of the engine now suffers from oil pressure. But we're obviously gonna have a worse miss than we did before because we're gonna be compressing against it. Um, we'll have compression and it just, it's gonna be a dead cylinder with no valve actuation. So, um, but I could pull the plug to ease that, but then I'd have a much bigger noise that I can't hear anything over. So, I am going to um, fire this up. I've never done this before. We'll see what happens here. So uh, we'll look for oil pressure first and then come over here. Okay, we have oil pressure. We're good that way. And no noise at all. That noise is gone. So we 100% know that that is our cam scrub noise. We've wiped the lifter on seven. That folks is something I'm pretty excited about. I've actually never done before, but that was pretty evident that our noise went away. And that's how you can pinpoint um, exactly if you have a cam lobe that's wiped out, take the pressure off the cam. 
take the two rockers, find the cylinder that's misfiring first, and a good scan tool will help you with, with as a misfire graphic, um, which was very apparent. And I'll show you, I'll add a, a little clip from another video that showed that misfire graphic here. Disconnect its rockers, pull the push rods out, and you take, you essentially remove the roller lifter from the camshaft. Now there can't be any more noise and our noise is gone. It sounded perfect there, except at a misfire. So that was really good. Uh, that, was a, that was a win of a test. I, probably not that big a deal. I just have never run an engine without any uh, valve drain on a cylinder before, but we just did. And it uh, proved the point that that's where our problem is. So that's that. Okay, just like that, we've got the engine torn down mostly as far as we need to go. We're getting pretty close to getting the camshaft out. So you can see we've torn the intake off, the exhaust manifolds off, the cylinder heads came off. We've torn the front cover off, the water pump off, um, all the accessories on the front to be able to take these three bolts off here off the cam gear. That'll pop down, the time chain will drop down. Then we'll have uh, four bolts that hold the cam retainer plate in. And before we can pull the cam out, we need to take out these bolts here. One, two, three, and four. Pull the trays out, the lifter trays, and all the lifters out. We'll do that now and we'll come back to it. But we're just gonna take all that apart real quick and then we'll be ready to pull the cam out. All right, so we got all the lifter trays out. Lifters are still in, we're ready to pull the cam. We've got that pulled back and the plate off there. We're gonna pull number seven lifters first for fun if they'll come out. Sometimes they will not come out because they're so damaged and you have to get them out a different way. Okay, that might be. Well, here is one of them trying to come out. Okay, we've got one there. Let's inspect its lobe. And as expected, that's the good one that came out for us. So it's gonna be the farthest one in the back. And it's probably not gonna to wanna to cooperate. We're probably gonna to have to drop him into the cam tunnel after the cam is out. Unless he's gonna come up for us here. Let me see if I can get some better light. There we go, it did decide to come out. That's good news. Okay, and there's, I don't know if that is the Exhaust or intake, I'm not sure, but I am certain when I flip it over, we're gonna see hell. There's the hell. At first I'm like, wait a second, what? <laughs> Roll it over, there's the hell. Still rolling, but completely galled. That really got me for a second. Let me pull this back. When I uh, focus up here, when I first pulled it out, it was like, what? <laughs> and then I rolled it over. I'm like, okay, that makes more sense. So there's our trash cam in there. Um, let's pull the rest of these lifters out and we'll extract the cam. One thing when you're doing this job, you're gonna need to pull a radiator too. That gives, you can leave the condenser in, but the radiator's gotta come out, just give you enough room to get that cam shaft to walk out. So we've already got a few other lifters ready to come out right here, wanting to, but uh, we're gonna pull them all here. 90,000 miles on this motor. That stinks. Let me get the rest of these lifters out and we'll pull the cam. All right, all lifters are out and they all came out smoothly. Nothing got hung up. We're just gonna take a water pump bolt, thread it into the camshaft here. Try to just one hand, this will be fun. Start sliding this camshaft out. Nice and easy. Don't wanna pull it hard or you'll hurt the cam bearing. Just nice and easy, work it back. Here we are, we're on to the second journal. And the fact that we made it past two uh, journals is really good. That means there's no cam bearings that decided to come out of the block. And now I'm gonna go ahead and remove this water pump bolt here. We're working it out here, third one. And it's not gonna be to this last journal we're gonna see damage, I think. Here we go, work it out. And there it is. There's our damage. Cam is out. And you can see right there, let me stand this up. That lobe is trashed. Hard to see in this light. Focus up here, would you? That was our noise. From what I understand and everything I can think of, it's the lifter that fails. 
Um, the lifter spalls. The lifter spalls up and loses its uh, outer hardness. Well, it peels away that metal and then it starts digging into the cam. You can really see that in that there. So this was just starting to misfire. So uh, your first noises might be subtle and the engine might be running fine and it might have to get to this stage before it starts misfiring and you can diagnose what cylinder it is. But and this is also why the customer thought it was a um, flex plate. It is in proximity to the rear of the motor and that would be transmitted through harmonics pretty close back there. But uh, as we saw in the first video I did, um, or the first part of this video, I should say, um, we isolated this noise by removing those rockers. So new camshaft and new lifters. That is the name of the game. Sucks that we lose a cam because these cams are like four to 500 bucks, depending on where you get them. So, all right, guys, I hope that helps you diagnose um, troublesome noise. Now, of course, this is not, you know, beginner level A or one, but if you're at all, if you're at all inclined, it's, just, it's not terrible. The LS motor is actually a pretty uh, friendly motor to work on and you can do it. Um, let me know if you have any questions um, or if I can answer uh, any problems that, or other ideas you guys might have that would be uh, useful or helpful in this video that we could have passed along. So, but anyway, we're gonna get a new camshaft in it, a uh, new set of lifters in it, deck the heads, um, check the valves. We'll do a, a vacuum test, make sure the valves look good. There's only 90,000 miles. We'll probably put the heads right back down on it. Um, but anyway, we'll just clean it up, regasket it, and send it down the road. Thanks for watching, guys. Okay, we're just about to put this back together. We've got some cylinder heads that have had the uh, the decks uh, surfaced and we're just getting ready to put a new camshaft in it. Um, that's what's next. We got to clean up these uh, surfaces here a little bit still to put the heads back down. But uh, we have a brand new melon camshaft that we're going to put in there. We ended up finding two lobes that were bad. Uh, we, we talked about number seven being bad, but then I also noticed, uh, I don't know what lobe it was, but it was starting to come apart here too. You can see that there just uh, starting to go bad there. Now, what causes that? Um, I can't tell you guys exactly. I think it might have to do with bad oiling, um, type of oil, I'm not changing oil enough. Um, but I think the lifter comes apart and then it uh, sheds. But we're gonna go ahead and uh, use some of this stuff right here and go ahead and lube up our cam journals and we'll slide that cam on inside. So basically we're just gonna, we've already hosed this off and cleaned it. So I'm just gonna put a few dabs of this stuff on the journals themselves. And then we'll lube up the new lifters really good and we'll slide those down on it and uh, That'll be sufficient for a roller cam. And now if this were a flat tappet, we'd be putting this stuff all over everywhere, but that's not the case with this. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, get this all lathered up. That's the next step. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and bring this down in here. And we're just gonna carefully, ever so carefully align the back lobe there, slide her on in. Nice and slow. There we go. Everything feels nice and smooth. Let's keep moving. We're three journals in. Now we're four. We can carefully slide it back. It gets a little trickier on this last one, as you can imagine. But with persistence and patience, now, let's just get the right bolt. You don't have much leverage at that point to lift it and get it to go in. So we're gonna look for our parts here. You can see we've already done a lot of washing and cleaning up. But here's a water pump bolt right there. And that'll give us just the leverage we need to get it to slide in that last journal. So we'll come on back here. Thread them in. 
just gotta be really careful when you're messing with these uh, cam bearings. You don't wanna scar anything up, you don't wanna hurt anything. And we are having a little bit of fun. There it goes. Last one's in, and then you wanna verify it spins nice and smooth, which it does. Um, and this is not a performance cam in any way. This is a bone stock replacement melling. And the melling part number, if anyone's interested, and this fits all the 5.3s from 9906. My part number is a melling MC1383. My cost was about 250-ish, maybe a little more. Um, but anyway, there's the camshaft back in. We're gonna go ahead and put the retaining plate back on. We'll reset timing, put our timing chain back on. Drop our lifters in, put our trays in, and it'll clean the decks a little bit. Reassemble it and center down the road. Um, this isn't gonna be a, this is as far as I'm gonna take this video. I'm not gonna do a step-by-step. -step. That's not what the point of this is. The, the point of this video is just to help you identify and diagnose um, lifter failure and cam failure for that matter. Um, they usually go hand in hand. But I hope that's been helpful to you guys. Um, I, I know I, I, my channel, I do a lot of drag racing type stuff and high performance, but I hope that the common thread here is uh, my passion for LS motors. Um, it's what I like to work on. Um, I know them inside and out, and uh, I've kind of got a rep reputation for that um, here where I work, um, my own shop. I don't work for anybody but me, but um, a lot of people bring me their, their trucks, their trucks and SUVs and whatever it might be, um, with an LS engine in it because I'm the guy. So, you know, a lot of times people say, oh, it's a bad motor, it's got to be replaced. And I'm like, bring it to me. Let me have a second opinion about it and I can usually find another alternative. Sometimes um, save people a whole heck of a lot of money. So hope that's helpful to you guys. Um, any questions, I will try to answer them. Um, I think it's awesome that people are doing their own stuff and I don't mind sharing if I can help. So. Thank you, and uh, subscribe to my channel if you if you haven't already. It really helps, and uh, I'm trying to grow this channel a little bit. I haven't put a lot of effort into it in the previous years, but it's something that I'm starting to get more interested in and doing. And if there's something you'd like to see or questions or, or video you'd like me to, to do, just uh, put it in the description, and I'll see if I can do that for you. Thanks, guys.